the next topic is, is flexibility and the use of flexibility. Electromobility is one of the sources of uh, uh, flexibility. That is, electromobility is one of the sources of flexibility. And uh, there is a sophisticated algorithm which can take into account all kinds of elements, including climatic conditions and uh, weather and all that, and uh, it can control the regime of charging. I can see some people who are experts in this area, and above all, I have two experts now, Mr. Kral, uh, Philip Kral and Tomáš Molek, who will tell us more about that. <laughs> Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. We will speak about flexibility. Is it just a buzzword or is it a real opportunity? So let us speak about some of the secrets of flexibility and the market with flexibility. I'll give you a somewhat broader introduction to give you an idea of where the market currently is and what is the environment. When we look at the current energy market, and Mr. Novotny spoke about the oil power, so it's similar indeed. There is a centralized energy production, very often working with the in the places of big resources as, uh, such as coal mines or steam uh, producing uh, facilities there are hundreds of uh, megawatts per hour capacities very often based on fossil resources fossil fuels and very often their production and their output is very well predictable and very little volatile management is uh, easy. Then uh, it goes through transmission system that uh, in the European Union is uh, more than average robust if you compare it with the US where the distribution transmission system is not so advanced. We in the EU are very well advanced. We have really a robust transmission system. The problem was that uh, there uh, was not possibility to store electrical energy soft exceptions. What I am trying to describe is it was not at long capacities, not all mountains have long slopes. And until recently, storage of uh, energy was economically uh, not advantageous. And consumption is something, again, easily predictable. If we take a household as an example, one household and predictability of the consumption is not so easy because every, one, every member of the family comes at different time home and uh, cooks, for instance, at different times. But if we make an average of, let us say, 1,000 households, the level of uncertainty gets uh, uh, lower and the model of consumption is getting stabilized. What are we aiming at? Mr. Topolanek probably spoke about it at the beginning, that on the pan-European level, there is a plan to shut down big uh, energy producers uh, based on fossil fuels, mainly on coal and decarbonization and transfer to RES. Uh, is being at focus. In the past, we wanted to prioritize nuclear and steam production, while now it's rather photovoltaics, uh, wind uh, power plants and similar resources. Of course, uh, these are very much dependent on external factors and therefore predictability is rather low or complicated. Mr. Klitschka and Mr. Podrog spoke about uh, storage facilities. We can say that the price of uh, electric, electrical energy storage uh, production is so low that it gives now economic meaning to to make uh, storage devices both for short-term and long-term storage. We also can observe uh, development of uh, electromobility. 
there is a usage of electrical energy, but as Mr. Venturas spoke just before us, it serves also for a short time balancing of uh, the supply of energy into buildings and into grid, depending. And last but not least, when we go down to companies level, we can see that there are trends of smartphones where buildings have a smart way of uh, uh, energy consumption management, uh, switching often to a regime where they produce energy through their home own photovoltaics. If I'm to resume, what is the result of the current trend is primarily decentralization when we transfer from uh, big centralized producers into smaller electric energy producers plus electrification where we can see liquid energy bears switch of and their uh, role in energy production flexibility is somewhere embedded in all that uh, these uh, flows I described they are by direction ones they can there can be usage of energy, but there are also supply of energy. The best example is a home photovoltaic. Decentralization, flexibility is, uh, sorry, uh, our ability to map all these elements, to control them, to steer them, and to make the best possible availability and uh, robustness of both grid and uh, distribution system. When speaking about trend of decarbonization and transfer to renewables, we can imagine that this cannot be done without major investments, which means that if we start investing now into a massive change of uh, grid and distribution system and into the way how we generally manage the energy and create new energy, we can expect that in the similar way investment will reflect itself in energy prices. Therefore, we cannot expect some rapid uh, price of uh, prices of energy decrease and also with an increasing uncertainty uh, uncertainty supported by the war in Ukraine, we can expect that prices of gas will reflect this uncertainty into their uh, gas prices. And we can even identify a certain pressure on transfer to dynamic prices of electrical energy as it's common in Western Europe. What a household can do in order to face such a situation? Well, a household should use resources available in a smart way. If you imagine a modern building, a modern family with a photovoltaic on the roof, with a boiler that is uh, controllable, manageable in the base ground, and with smart appliances so that uh, a washing machine can wash not only at night but also at noon. So there should be smart management elements in both uh, usage and uh, consumption of uh, energy so that uh, appliances including the boiler are smartly controlled and at time uh, of high prices of energy the consumption is reduced and vice versa. Excesses or shortcomings of energy can be traded at the market through flexibility. If I'm able to produce more energy and I'm able to store it in batteries, I can offer it to the market through a flexibility framework and my aggregator can use it for monetization purposes that can bring me some given amount of money. Before getting to details, let me say what are the basic players on the flexibility market. We mentioned a household or a company. This is flexibility provider. 
And this is the entity that uh, has uh, different assets, being able to control them through IT or from, uh, through some uh, metering and management uh, device that uh, manages both excesses and shortcomings. And uh, the small system the provider has is controlled in such a way that ideally the excess is consumed on spot, as uh, the, 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 the produced energy is consumed on spot. As soon as there is an excess of energy, then through aggregate, uh, uh, this, it, this can be offered at the market into so-called virtual power plants or power blocks, and this flexibility can be then treated at the market uh, in order to balance the grid system or in order to bring to monetize it and therefore then it becomes a part of a trade uh, system and there must be functionality of uh, controlling flexibility units and controlling system i will pass the floor now to my colleague tomas Thank you. Good afternoon to our viewers and participants. Uh, thank you, uh, Philip, for having started, uh, Tomáš, for having started. Flexibility, as it was already presented, uh, will be now developed further by me, the very term of it, flexibility as a new market opportunity, depending on legislation. And uh, in this respect, we will speak about uh, practically how to use flexibility. Thanks to changes in legislation, as Honza Fosek or Mr. Gavor spoke about, it, these changes, these amendments are ahead of us. Something have been already implemented such as uh, offering supporting services uh, to the grid in the Czech Republic from aggregation block uh, si of size 1 megawatt, uh, possibility to decentralize the completing it, uh, which means that uh, the concept described by Philip is already uh, existing in the Czech Republic. You can compose a virtual power block or power plant from different modules uh, dispersed over the country and as an aggregator of flexibility you can get to the market and offer the services in order to balance the grid and earn money. How much uh, it can bring in terms of uh, a profit, we will speak about it in the second part of my presentation. This picture rather shows the current situation while using of flexibility will be rather uh, feasible in the future. Out of all the things that were already mentioned, or most of them were mentioned, I would like to focus on the topic of so-called variable baseline. It may sound complicated as a term, but uh, let me explain it. It's uh, the fact that now, when you want to offer services in order to balance the system, you must have a stable value of your output uh, one hour beforehand, a proofed one, and which means that it still excludes technologies that are uh, that have variable outputs. They are able to produce and change their outputs, but uh, according to current legislation, they cannot be used in order to balance the system because they are uh, not, uh, their out output changes are not predictable. Since the next year, it will change, and even such systems as photovoltaics, uh, uh, power uh, plants, or heat pumps will be given the chance to be used and even if their output is not stable thanks to a certain possibility of predicting their outputs starting from the benchmark level from which the service will be identified and this will result in a much larger scope of usage of these uh, 
uh, devices, both for companies and for municipalities. If so, they will become active parts, active players on the market. When speaking about technologies that are currently available in the Czech Republic and used in the Czech Republic for purpose of flexibility, first of all, they are co-generation units, uh, typically uh, gas engines able to produce both electricity and heat, and due to historical legislation, there's been demand for such resources in order to use them to cover heat demands in winter and effective usage of gas so that it's not only heat that is the final product, but there is also a co-generated product such as electricity. In the Czech Republic, currently there are hundreds of megawatts of co-generation units from several hundreds out, out to several megawatts. And thanks to uh, opening of the market, the flexibility in this term can be fully used in order to balance the system for the operator of the transmission system. More sources <coughs> which can also be used, although to a limited extent, are batteries. Uh, batteries are storage sites with heat accumulation to uh, electric boilers where the accumulation of the technology can uh, uh, again be used. What is very interesting economically are the so-called diesel generators or the backup generators which many companies have to keep for the safety of their operation and they can earn money to the owners. They can earn some extra benefit thanks to the current prices and these are really interesting assets to give, to provide flexibility. You're not really bound to use diesel generators because you may have high costs of that, so it's only limited to certain services and there are some applications which, which are only used uh, several times a year and for these the diesel generators can be a, a suitable solution. I also expect for the years to come that the uh, uh, the, uh, that uh, for the peak uh, consumption there will be better and uh, th there will be much more use, much more um, uh, demand for the uh, renewable energies. Uh, uh, I think that the photovoltaics and other renewable sources will be more heavily used for the uh, control of the system, of the grid and uh, uh, the controlled use will also be recurred to. This is a table, table showing the various types of use. It's not just about the technologies which we know now, but it also shows the potential of the electromobility for the future, where there could be hundreds of megawatts, if which, if properly managed, they could be used and it could bring economic benefit. So if I uh, provide the, uh, my capacity for the stabilization of the grid, it will be uh, rewarded. Now, as to hydrogen, I can see that it does not appear here, nor does it uh, in uh, Western countries. Uh, the uh, economic feasibility of the technologies is not yet up to the level where it would make sense. So, the flexibility of this uh, uh, of this uh, um, technology is still hidden, and it will appear in the future.
If we look at the economic side of it, we have a graph where we attempted at modeling using the prices which existed in the first half of this year and which were used for the stabilization of the grid and uh, one of the technologies if we take the unit price like for e from from each unit we have one megawatt so here we can see how much with a portfolio as you have here how much you can earn you uh, providing it for various services so it is the up technology uh, the backup sources or battery systems in general for the fastest uh, uh, fcr service the potential of benefit is huge in our models we got to uh, really huge amounts and uh, the investments which may be worth tens of millions of crowns the return on such an investment is in the order of months so this really is interesting and uh, we also have the potential of electromobiles of diesel generators of heat pumps uh, co-generation units we keep talking about the potential benefits or earnings in the order of hundreds uh, uh, hundreds of uh, thousands of uh, euros. We realize that the potential for the future will drop because there will be more competition, there will be other aggregators and more technologies which will push the price, uh, the prices down. But our estimates are conservative and uh, we have uh, our predictions for the future, but still this looks like a very uh, promising part of uh, the uh, market and I think that flexibility is very important also for the stabilization of the grid and the uh, CHEPS, uh, that is CEPS, the Czech uh, electricity grid is aware of that. Here I, show, here I show some of the metrics for what may look like important to the individual players on the market if really they want to provide flexibility. It is still true that it makes economic sense if you have, uh, if you can produce at least uh, hundreds of kilowatts and megawatts, if possible. If you are a flexi uh, if you are a flexibility provider, you have to know where you uh, have it, uh, when you need it, or when you are uh, ready to provide it for the uh, for the grid. And you also have to know uh, what is your system and what your system can achieve. If we speak about aggregators, Philip spoke about it. The aggregator must have the capacity or the output in the tens of uh, uh, megawatts or higher units of megawatts. Uh, and it has to be connected to the markets. Uh, uh, you have to know what is the situation on the market on a daily basis or in the course of the day and you have to be able to predict the flexibility. For the rest, it, re it depends on the complexity of your portfolio. If you have some uh, straightforward equipment with a predictable operation regime, then you need not have any sophisticated IT uh, devices in the heat generation unit, it depends upon you what uh, when you when you put the boiler in operation when you start it. There are other 
technologies where you need a smarter system and you have to have some systemic support both for the prediction and for the control and uh, for the operation. So you, you need a control unit which will make it possible for you to connect to the grid or to the end users. From the perspective of households, because there are two types of subjects, one of them are companies or aggregators, those who can provide flexibility, but on the other hand there are households, which in the future should play a very important role in the energy sector. And the situation still is uh, that the flexibility in the Czech Republic, when we speak about households, cannot be used much. There is a certain potential, there are traders who can connect uh, the uh, households with the spot market, but Unless a uh, household has a photovoltaic uh, uh, installation and uh, some metering device, they can't really do much. The uh, smart metering is not yet sufficiently uh, spread, uh, so there is no constant monitoring. Well, we are running short of time, so I don't think I have to speak about this because many of those who spoke before me uh, uh, told you already about that. But let's look some. Let's look at some of the figures uh, in terms of savings potential if you replace your uh, appliances uh, for the more economous ones. Uh, the technical progress is also uh, reflected in the, the equipment of the households, so uh, you should buy such appliances which for the future will make it possible for you to participate in the flexibility market and uh, which at present will allow you to achieve some savings in terms of energy consumption or financial economies. Uh, there are some average values which we used uh, and we drew them from a study for the Czech Republic. We looked at what is the average equipment uh, per uh, household and per household and how much could be saved if uh, uh, if you replace some of the appliances, the, the economies uh, could be up to 13,000 crowns. We are talking about the prices that were valid in the first uh, half of this year. Now, as to the practical examples, there are technologies of the future, of course, and uh, there are some pilot projects existing already which focus on that which allow for trading with active customers. You have uh, uh, the uh, trading that can, uh, FVE trading using shares which exists in Vienna. Mm, you can't install uh, PV everywhere, certainly not in some of uh, the uh, central parts of the cities, but uh, such a park, such a photovoltaic uh, installation can be situated somewhere else outside of the center. And uh, some of the cities have uh, huge ambitions uh, in terms of covering roofs with uh, PVs and uh, that will obviously necessitate uh, the involvement of the uh, energy suppliers and uh, other, other stakeholders. There are certain places where this already works and uh, in the future I'm sure that we there will be a sound basis for further development and 
the flexibility, flexibility will play an increasingly important role. Thank you for your attention. So, is it a buzzword or is it a real opportunity? I think that uh, the very specific opportunities were quite uh, uh, clearly displayed. You presented what the opportunities are. I want to ask the companies what should they do, what is the procedure if they want to uh, be included in the market, in, in, the flex, in the flexibility market, what they have to uh, prepare, what they have to buy, what they have to uh, install. Do I have to go somewhere and ask help? Well, at first, what you have to do uh, uh, first is to consider whether it will be worthwhile, whether it will pay off. So, the best is to seek some expert advice who can do uh, the analysis and the deliberation for you. Then you have to have the hardware infrastructure, which is the electricity distributor. There are specialized companies which are uh, dealing in energy management, so they are able to go through all the operations for which you use energy in your company and uh, they are able to install the elements in the distributors which can control the individual circuits depending on a certain scenarios. And uh, then you have to go through the scenarios uh, which are applicable for your installation. And uh, heating, for instance, which uh, 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 during which hours of the day you will switch the heating on? Does it make much difference to you? And so on. Then you can contact a flexibility aggregator or you can just uh, announce that you want to become an aggregator given the features or the capacities which you have and somebody will help you again what should be done. Clear. And since I've been also active on the market, I know that there are industrial companies that uh, have uh, next to their manufacturing halls or, or their roofs, photovoltaics, uh, basically for their own consumption, not doing anything with uh, the excess of energy. This is uh, one of the quiz quizzes uh, companies could think about if uh, there is uh, in a put a very uh, considerable, they should also speak about using their output, uh, such as uh, storage, energy storage, or in cooperation with uh, an aggregator to think about their market uh, application, what Philip has described uh, to ensure the company through a smart uh, management uh, system that will make saving possible and that will bring some space for further uses, uh, including monetization. So, I wanted just to add that there are also faster approaches than this one, economic uh, approaches, how to solve at least some problems through battery and through monetization on the economy, uh, energy market. Thank you, David. I think that we are at the end of the contents of our conference. Indeed, we thank all the lecturers for their contributions. I do believe that uh, listeners have uh, formed their views on them. I remind you that you can have a look at all of the presentations or if you haven't uh, watched throughout the day, you can study them. And I do believe that you will do that because it's an interesting and very topical theme. Thank you once more.